Hey guys, it's Justine, and today you are watching a virtual reality video, so you can look around, you can look up, you can look down as we explore NASA's Jet Propulsion Lab. And I'm so excited because I've wanted to visit this place for so long. This is where they build the robots they send up into the solar system, and we're going to be checking out first the Mission Control, where they gather and they kind of make sense of all of that information that those robots in the world are sending down to us. So let's go take a look. Don't forget, guys, this is virtual reality. Look around, have a peek, see what you can see. You never know what you might see. You can see a lot of stuff, actually. Hi, Tracy. Hey there. Thanks so much for joining us today. Absolutely. So what exactly do you do here? Like, what is your full title? I am the Juno Deputy Chief Engineer. And what that job means right now that we're in ops is that when things go wrong with the spacecraft, I help work with the team to figure out how to resolve it. So we're here in Mission Control. So can you take us on like a little quick tour of like yeah. what happens here? Absolutely. So this room, you can kind of think of it as the center of the universe, because this is the place where all the spacecraft that are out past the orbit of the moon that are using the Deep Space Network to send their data back, their data comes to those networks that's at uh, Madrid, Goldstone, Canberra, and it all comes through this room where people like the data controller, the operations chief, make sure there's nothing wrong with that data flow and it's getting out to the operators of the mission and the science team so they can do everything they need to do. So you've been working on Juno and you're still currently on that project. So what's that kind of been like for you from start to not quite finish, but <laughs> to currently where it is now? It's been pretty amazing. I joined the Juno team in 2009, about two years before launch, getting through all the things we needed to do to prepare the spacecraft to go on this long journey and get to Jupiter and do its job. It launched in August 2011, took a five-year cruise to get out there. We had plenty of things to do, plenty of things that went right and plenty of things that went not so right for us to deal with. And then we arrived on July 4th, um, 2016. All stations on Juno Cord, we have the tone for burn cutoff on Delta B. Gratis Domo, Juno, welcome to Jupiter. So, you know, not only Juno's going on, but you clearly have tons of other things. So what else can we look forward to from you guys in the coming years? Yeah, we have a few really major missions that are in the works right now. There is the Mars 2020, which is the next rover going to Mars. Curiosity is still there and working. One of our MER rovers is still working. But we're looking to put a new suite of instruments and go explore a new spot on Mars with that mission in 2020. There's also the Europa mission, which is really awesome because it's going there expressly to study the moon of Jupiter, which they think has liquid water under a shell of ice. Wow. One of the more, in my opinion, I'm not a scientist, did I mention that? <laughs> <laughs> One of the possibly more likely places for there to be life in our solar system. It's so exciting to see everything that you guys are doing. So congratulations on the amazing mission and all of your future missions. Thank you, I appreciate it. Yes. Thanks for coming to see Thank us. Thank you. So there's one thing that I've noticed here is they have peanuts everywhere. I mean, they're even right here on this cardboard cutout. Did and you I just say peanuts? <gasps> Hi! Hey! Oh my goodness, this is crazy. Yeah. How are you? I'm good, how are you? Uh, thanks for joining us uh, here. Yeah, both of me. So one of the things that I've noticed, what's the re what's up with this? Yeah, the is peanuts. There a story? Yep. There's actually a tradition here at JPL. So in the 1960s, we were sending the first robotic spacecraft to the moon. We were trying to understand what the moon would look like at the scale humans were going to land. So we had to kind of figure out the terrain. So we sent these spacecraft, which were basically missiles with a camera on them. They were meant to crash into the moon, but just take pictures until the very last moment. Here's the problem. One through six all failed. Mm. Uh, they blew up on rockets. They missed the moon entirely. Uh, we had cameras that didn't work, so kind of a problem. Ranger 7, though, the seventh mission in this trend, finally worked. And they looked around the room. They were trying to figure out what was different between Ranger 7 and the previous six. And they saw peanuts were in the room. So since then, we've actually had peanuts at all of our major events, at Curiosity's launch and landing, at uh, Juno's Jupiter orbiting station. All these times, we have peanuts in the room. Um, you know, we like to say it's a tradition, not mm -hmm. superstition. Yes, of course but, it is. You know. Well, I'm not going to complain, because there's free snacks everywhere. <laughs> 
Well, thanks. This is great. Do you do you have a couple of these at your house? Or? Uh, no, no, but you know what? This would be great in my office to pretend that I'm working when I'm just <laughs> taking a nap. Thank you guys so much for watching, and a huge thank you to JPL for letting me take this amazing tour and bring you guys along with me for the ride. I will see you guys later. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure you go back and watch again, because you never know what you might miss if we are.